That's me in the arrow right there, or right here. Okay, um, I work at uh, Redmart and I do front end and DevOps. Uh, so Redmart, we are, we think uh, we're the leading online grocer in Singapore. Um, we're really building the next generation e-commerce platform. Uh, everything from ERP, warehouse, transport, logistics. Uh, we even have robotic trolleys, uh, and we do all that in house. Um, we're more than just website and API, but on top of all that, we're actually a startup. Um, so today I want to talk about how we really develop features at Redmart. Uh, I like to think that we have a workflow that really gets code into production fast. Um, to do this, we really have like a no talk, all action approach. Uh, I mean, I now, I now I realize that this is a real bad slide to have when you're actually giving a talk. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but really, what, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is that uh, we try to encourage uh, lesser meetings with this workflow and improve productivity. And I want to share a little bit about that. Um, hopefully, with this talk, uh, you can apply some of these workflows for your, for your own team. But if not, then anything else, at least you'll get to hear about a real-world development workflow of a scaling startup. Right. So cool. Let's get started. Uh, raise of hands. How many of you guys have seen this site? All right, cool. Uh, I mean, I think it's pretty cool, like uh, especially the CSS animation stuff. Uh, like people, you know, in Singapore, they'll go like, damn power lah. Uh, and I, I mean, I totally dig it. Um, and now let's see, let's see if we can replicate it on Redmart. All right, let's try and do that. And bear with me. I think the more dif more challenging part here will be me switching around the displays rather than actually doing the deployment. So on this, on this site, as you guys have been going to every single day, uh, this fancy animation is really cool. Uh, and we have this page on Redmart. Uh, let me see. If you scroll down all the way to the bot bottom and click on this link, we have a humans file. And I want to like have this kind of fancy stuff happening on this page as well. So let's see if we can, if we can do that. Okay. So I actually went in and uh, cheated a little bit, obviously, looked at the code and stuff. Um, and they have a uh, keyframe of smash. Let's add that. OK, but actually, yeah, cancel that. Before that, what I want to do is really I want to start developing this feature. So what I'm going to do is, uh, within my repository, I'm going to do git flow feature start gsconf. Oops. All right, cool. I'm already there. All right. And actually, well, let me just copy the whole damn thing. And we have a grunt task obviously running in the background, and it looks to be OK. So what I'm going to do is see whether that works. Hmm, what happened to this guy? Always goes wrong when you are in front of people. So what I'm going to do, OK, let's just imagine that worked. OK. <laughs> and what I'm going to do is push it. Um, so git push. All right. And then what we're going to go, what that happens is like the whole build process will kick in. And if you go into here, It'll auto, because I created a, a branch, a feature branch of JS Conf cheat, uh, it's automatically deployed to uh, 
this uh, server, and then any so anybody can basically access it, and there you go. So then what I'll do is I'll just ask one of my colleagues here to help me uh, merge this request. <laughs> Major panic. And automatically, you can see, like, because the build process has passed, uh, it 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 lets us know that you know this is a safe this is safe to merge. Oh, wait. Oh, sorry, it's still building in process. It looks good. <laughs> Are you gonna merge that? I don't want to be responsible. No, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> okay, so while while. Give me a yay. So while, while uh, my colleague goes ahead and, and merges that, we'll get back to it. Um, <coughs> yeah, the deployment side is going to take like a minute or two, so I'll cut back. Uh, but basically, um, that, that's done. Like, and how do you, and what do we, what just happened? Like, um, I spent really more time figuring out about the projector stuff and panicking about uh, coding, uh, but essentially you're able to deploy a feature into production really, really fast. Uh, and I know, I mean, you're thinking this was it's staged. Uh, it wasn't really a feature. It was just like some fancy CSS stuff. Um, but I'd say I, I still think it was pretty cool. Um, <laughs> Where's my applause team? <laughs> um, and in case you're still not convinced, um, let me tell you like a little bit of a story on why, uh, why it's specifically cool about Redmart. Um, and it's about this thing, product market fit. And I know you're wondering, like, what's this douche talking about product market fit at a GS Corp? Like, seriously, what, what's up with this guy? Uh, but just like, bear with me, okay? Because I think many of us here are working at startups, and, and to, for me personally, I'm quite fascinated uh, on how uh, business and company dynamics uh, impact you know, the developers. Um, because, like, really, companies scale, bro. Uh, and, if, and if you're lucky uh, and people start using your product, um, and at Redmart, we count ourselves fortunate that we are one of those companies, you're going to scale from like 10 to 100. 2,000 to 10,000 like users, orders, messages, whatever. I mean, whatever the scale of your measure is. And as a result, I mean, you're going to raise money. Uh, you more awesome people are going to join your team. Uh, and to sustain the growth and sustain the users, you want to be developing a lot more features. And what's going to happen is you're going to have <coughs> you're going to have a lot of developers working on a lot of uh, multiple features at the same time. And we know when we do that. Uh, it's going to result in a lot of merge hells, a lot of dependency issues, a lot of versioning problems, um, and that gets magnified with, with more people that join. I mean, like, with a few people, it's it's okay, but as in, as more people join, um, that the problem gets amplified, and we really need to ta tackle that. Uh, but not only are there like developer issues, uh, we also have like other stakeholders, other people that join. You know, it's not just developers. Uh, and I think it's more speci it's specifically more the case for Redmart because we really have a lot of uh, com multiple systems like the ERP, uh, warehouse, uh, automation, transport, logistics, which we all build software software for in-house. Uh, I'm not saying that we have the most complex systems. Obviously, we're just we're just a startup. But even if our uh, systems are not the same and and it's different, but the issue of communicating changes effectively and efficiently. Uh, it still applies to, I think, everyone. Um, because, I mean, as the team scales, you really realize that, like, huddling around developers really doesn't work anymore. I mean, 
so many of us have had that experience where you know there's somebody crowding over your shoulder trying to get some update and you know it's just like uh, is this done or and looking at the code I mean they might just think like you know most of the time they just think like it's a matrix and it looks really fancy and they're entertained by that but really it's it's freaking annoying uh, and worse still is like when somebody's looking over and like you know can you change the hex code of that to that and like no man I mean it's not productive it's like a uh, total waste of my time um, and on the other hand like instead of them coming to you if you go over to them all the time and you bring your laptop over every now and then that doesn't scale either because we really can use our time more efficiently um, and this is super important because if we don't take care of this um, we don't figure out what's an efficient way to get stuff out and communicated um, we're going to end up with spending a lot of more times in meetings and writing less code and that is really depressing I mean it's like in fact, it's so depressing that we actually come up with the theory. Um, you know this guy, right? Uh, famous, pretty much. Came up with this uh, mass energy equation. We have another theory. Uh, and we call it, actually, we don't even have a name for it. Maybe I'll just call it the Thor theory or the lightning theory, whatever. Um, and this basically means that the environment that developers love, or productive environment, is directly proportional to the code that they write per day and inversely proportional to the meetings that they attend per day. And this is true, like this is totally true. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> That's totally my rigged audience, yeah. but I appreciate it anyway. Um, so just quick reca recap, uh, company scale usually results in more meetings, uh, more branch mess, we need to fight that. Um, empowering developers to work on as many features as possible at once so that they can write more code and not have to spend too much time communicating uh, to so that we can reduce meetings is like is very important. Uh, but how do we do that? How do we empower multi-feature development um, by multiple developers at the same time? And the answer really, for us at least, it starts uh, with Gitflow. And most of you know, I mean, you probably know what Gitflow is, and again, like bear with me, okay? Uh, and for the, for the sake of those who don't, I just want to do a quick recap. recap. Uh, and Git, that Gitflow is basically a branching model. It's a convention that everybody in your team will adopt uh, and just helps to ensure a sane branching state. Um, for our purposes, uh, the fundamental block is really the feature branches. Uh, feature branches are basically where you write all your code. It's based off the develop branch um, you work on this every single day. Uh, for example, uh, <coughs> in the feature for JSConf, you would do a feature flow, uh, feature, git flow feature start JSConf, and what this does is just basically takes develop and creates a new branch and checks it out automatically for you. Um, once you're done with the feature, you basically merge it back into develop, and that's why the develop branch is the integration branch. It's where all of your features get merged into once they're finished. Um, like, for example, when you finish off the J, uh, JSCon feature, you just do a feature flow finish, and what this does is it checks out develop, it merges JSCon back into develop, and deletes this uh, feature branch. Uh, release branch. Uh, this is another one where you want to where you want to combine a set of uh, features. This is particularly useful. Uh, has been useful for us uh, when you want to stage completed features uh, that you want to deploy later. Um, like for example, you worked on feature ABC, you're done, you're integrated it, you've integrated into develop branch and then you wanna release it a week later, but at the same time, you're gonna start on D and E. Um, at that point, it's probably good to get uh, develop merged into uh, release and then not touch it until it's actually out in production. And of course, you can probably guess at this point that you know master branch it contains the official release history uh, anything that is in master branch is uh, production. Uh, and in case of like, you know, when shit really hits the fence, you have hotfix branches, which are pretty much similar to feature branches, but uh, they're based off the master branch instead of the develop branch. Um, so really, Gitflow helps uh, maintain the sanity of our branches for us. Uh, and from what I went through just now, you'll notice that there's like three branches which are kind of like gatekeepers. So like develop, release, and master. And it makes kind of like a common sense uh, decision in terms of code review uh, that uh, we do it there. So anytime you want to 
put uh, code into develop, re release, or master, it has to go through like a pull request and a proper uh, code review process, kind of like the pseudo one that we did just now. Um, so Git flow helps, uh, but for us, oaths help as well. We specifically has this, have these, uh, commit and feature branch only, uh, commit and push often. In fact, like we, we make it a point that every single logical improvement to the code is committed and pushed. Um, we also merge develop into feature branches every day, just because somebody else would be working on uh, other features and they may have merged it into develop. Um, and merge features only into develop, never, ever, ever to master, only have pull requests to master. Um, and as long as we, we use Git flow and stick to our oaths, we are really able to work on really as many features as we want, um, at least at this point. But obviously just having branching is really not enough. Uh, we still have, if, if just, just by having branches, we still have to bring our laptops everywhere. We need to get, we actually now need to get them deployed and to that, uh, I want to talk a little bit about our environments, of which we have four. Uh, and again, you'll see how like Gitflow is really the starting point for our environments as well. The first one is local. I mean, this is really straightforward. It's the developer's laptop. Yeah, done. Uh, we jump to the third one. I'll get back to the second. But this is basically, um, this hosts, so the staging environment hosts basically the develop branch or the release branch. And the reason why it could be both is because we may not have a release branch all the time. If we do, then it serves the release branch. Otherwise, it always serves the develop branch. And obviously, we have the production environment, which you run, uh, which runs everything uh, that's in the master branch. Everything that's in master branch goes into production. And <coughs> you'd think, actually, that this is probably the most important branch. But to us, uh, the development branch is actually the most important. Uh, it's where the features are deployed. It's where the real stuff happens, and we <coughs> and we uh, invest in that. So basically, when you deploy something to a developer branch, it automatically goes to alpha.redma.com. If you deploy something to a feature branch, it automatically goes to a feature uh, URL, something like this, which what we which is what we saw just now. When I did a push, uh, it was uh, deployed, although I cheated but it's still deployed at uh, jsconf.alpha.redma.com. So anybody can go in and access it and, and provide feedback. Uh, and the command to deploy basically is, is the ever so loved git push, right? Um, it just figures out, like depending on which branch you deploy to, uh, which branch you push, it, get de it gets deployed by CI automatically. So you really don't have to worry about anything else but just working about your code and working in git. Um, for the CI process, basically, I mean, we use Travis. You could use Jenkins, uh, Circle CI, or whatever. Um, but basically, the point is this: that once you do a push, uh, the CI process, Travis picks up the branch, and because it knows, it obviously knows what branch you push to. So by translation, it knows which environment, and by that, it knows exactly which servers uh, to deploy to as well. So it runs the tests, it builds, uh, it creates the artifacts. Uh, by, me, by, by that, I mean like it compresses, minifies, zips it up, and it actually transfers them to the right server and starts the application. Uh, we use Grunt for this. Uh, so every one of our application has a CI directory, which has a particular Grunt file that is responsible for like compressing, zipping, and transferring all the artifacts to the correct server. Uh, and in case uh, you prefer to look at flow shards, but yeah, basically, it's pretty much the same. Uh, developer pushes. Within Travis, you do a build. If it fills, it, we notify people on Slack. Uh, if it passes, you create artifacts. You zip them up, compress them. Uh, you, we also upload them to S3 uh, in case of rollbacks. Um, and then we get the particular servers, transfer the artifacts uh, to those servers, and then start the application on those servers. And all this part is done by uh, grunt task. Uh, and that just means like the, the powerful thing about that is we just get to deploy with git commands. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't mess with the developer workflow because that's, you're so familiar with git. I mean, we love git. And um, the cool thing also is now that communication also becomes part of this workflow. So we never ever change the developer workflow. That is the central part of everything. Um, so every time we create a new feature, we have a new channel on Slack and Slack. 
and who, all the builds for those features are automatically populated to that channel so that you know, every time a commit uh, is, is, is pushed, uh, it's automatically deployed, uh, just like in the case with the JSConf example. Um, so we know we really no longer have to bring our laptops to show anything, and, any, and anybody who wants to get involved or wants to keep updated just, just need to follow that channel. Uh, yeah. And basically what that means is like we, we, we are now able to communicate every incremental change. Uh, and we communicate it in the best way possible, which is just to write code. Um, and obviously, I mean, not showing code to whoever wants to be, who, whoever wants to be notified, but giving them something that, is w that works and they can play around and interact with like, every single commit. Uh, and as a, re as a result of that, we really do have uh, a lot less meetings. Um, and we spend the time instead playing more foosball. Uh, ten, <laughs> turns out, like this was a, the, probably the biggest realization for me, is that uh, everybody hates meetings. I thought actually it was just the developers that hate them, and everybody else just uses meetings to kind of like uh, do do stuff. Uh, but turns out it's not the case. Um, so back to my lightning slide, because uh, I love it so much. Uh, what exactly? is uh, lightning branches. So actually, it's really nothing but uh, what we think of as a considered investment in the development environment. Um, every logical improvement, every single commit is important, not just the final deployment that you go into staging or to production. Every single one of those commits is important. And it's important to get feedback on that and get it quickly. So the, to be able to deploy every single one of them in separate feature branches, uh, is really awesome. And it also inculcates the habit of uh, really pushing small and incre incremental changes very fast and getting feedback. So in case like I've been putting you guys to sleep or anything, uh, if you wanted to listen to just this part, uh, this is pretty much the crux of it. Like how do we actually deploy the feature branches, which I think is simple but pretty neat. Uh, and the answer is like, we use Nginx. I mean, it's really good at routing, so why not? And our single page applications are really good at being lightweight and just about being able to run anywhere. Like you put it on S3, you put it you know, anywhere, it just runs. Um, so all you really need is this, like a server block in Nginx, uh, set a white list of you know, a domain, uh, set a default feature. We usually use develop, makes sense. Uh, and then based on the host, you change the feature. So if, if we just, it's just a simple reg regex and says that if it's jsconf, then set, if it's jsconf.alpha.renma.com, then the feature is jsconf. And we will serve that at a path of, path to feature slash jsconf. And then it's really, really simple. It's just a simple matter of, you know, transferring your build artifacts to the correct path to the correct server, and it just works. Like, we don't have to create a new server. You just need to deploy it to the correct place with this really neat configuration. Uh, and you guys might be thinking, like, what? Really, that's it? It's that simple? Uh, yeah, it's kind of that simple. Uh, I mean, actually, there's a lot more. Uh, we do ha use a lot of Chef, a lot of Ruby to do a lot of the automation. But I kind of, like, I value my life. I don't want to talk about it here in GSConf. Uh, <laughs> But in case there's any one of you who want to talk about it and are not loaded with a gun or something, come and chat with me. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Ritesh. Maybe just one question for Ritesh, especially for those of you who are involved in uh, large scale applications and need to build features. Questions. All right. All right. We have yes, a uh, one. Steve. Uh, hi. Yep. Um, just a question. How many times do you all push to production every day? I mean, obviously, this is not a, I think it's, this is more of a DevOps talk, but yeah, just wondering. Uh, it depends on which project, but for the front end, um, I would say at least once or twice. Once or twice. Because I feel for Git, for Git uh, flow, right, it might not be as, I mean, it's actually quite complicated, and to teach all your developers on that, right, might be something that is more suited. It's, I think, more suited for long releases. So I was actually quite 
mm. uh, buzz, buzzard when you say you all use it for mm. like to push your production like quite fast. No, I mean we actually use it like for the simple uh, CSS hack yep. that I did. We we do that all the time because feature branches are like super super cheap. Have you all considered like maybe like GitHub Flow where all you just do is uh, from master to feature branch and then back to master? Um, so that simplifies. You don't even have the release and you know stuff like that. Uh, we wanted to do this just so that we can have uh, the ability to have pull requests. Uh, pull requ you also can have pull requests, you know, just to master. I mean, in a sense, yeah. I mean, just a thought. Because okay. I've been looking at this thing for over a year now. And okay, cool. Yeah. Let's chat. So, yeah. Yeah, there are various ways of doing it. I think yeah. choose what uh, suits for your team. GitHub Flow or Git Flow. Thank you, Ritesh. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.